Hi there, my name is Shijaz Abdullah. I am a Solution Architect Lead at Amazon Web Services. Today I'm going to talk to you about this robot that I've built uh, using the CamJam Educate number 3, a Raspberry Pi and some Amazon Web Services AWS. Before I get into the details of how I constructed this robot, I just want to give you a quick uh, I just want to give you a quick walkthrough uh, or walk around of what this robot does and uh, a high level overview of what's inside it. Um, this robot, as you can see, it's got wheels uh, in the back, two wheels in the back, and a uh, caster wheel in the front, uh, which allow it to move about and, and do things. Um, it's got these, um, these ultrasound sensors in the front which prevent the robot from bumping into objects and it's also got uh, this robot can also uh, see and speak now that's interesting how does this robot see and speak um, uh, there's this camera that's mounted on the, on, the, on the top here this is nothing but a raspberry pi camera module uh, mounted on the top and it's got a speaker a bright orange one that's mounted on the chassis as well uh, which allows it to speak now how does this work um, when the robot moves around and it encounters an obstacle or it sees an object in its path it uses the camera to see the object uh, it takes a picture of that and sends it to Amazon recognition now what's Amazon recognition Amazon recognition is a um, is a service um, in the cloud that can identify objects and faces uh, in images and video uh, files, basically. So it's an artificial intelligence. It uses the power of AI to um, identify uh, objects and faces. Now, the, the robot basically uh, takes a picture of an object that it encounters, um, send, calls the Amazon recognition service uh, to figure out what this uh, object is. The Amazon recognition service um, sends a response containing what it sees and then um, that um, that response is actually converted to speech before the speaker can actually play uh, what it see what the robot sees so how is that done I'm using another uh, Amazon service Amazon web service uh, it's called Amazon poly what does Amazon poly do um, it does text-to-speech conversion so it's a text-to-speech service um, so the response that I got from Amazon recognition based on the object that was seen by the camera uh, is actually converted from text to speech so that this speaker here can actually say that um, uh, that I can see a cup in front of me, I can see a ball in front of me. So the robot moves around, sees objects in front of it, avoids bumping into those objects, takes a picture of that object, uses Amazon Web Services to figure out what it is and also to speak out what it's seeing in front of it. So that's what the robot does. Now, without further ado, uh, let's look at how this robot was constructed. Now, uh, I've popped open the hood of this robot uh, to show you what's inside. As I said, I've used the CamJam Educate number three and it comes with all the components, all the basic components that you would need to start building a robot. Um, I've used the, the box that the components shipped in, um, the CamJam Educate shipped in, so I've used that box as a chassis. Like most other people on the internet, I found that it's a useful, it's useful, it's a creative way of, uh, of just, you know, uh, not having to design your own chassis, just use the, the box. Now let's look at the components that's inside uh, this robot I've built. Um, first of all, um, Here's the Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Raspberry Pi Model 3B uh, to power the robot. Um, in hindsight, I think a Raspberry Pi 0W with the wireless module uh, should do well and it can actually you know, reduce the space uh, that's occupied by the, the Raspberry Pi inside this, uh, this tiny chassis and it can also reduce the weight. But um, I just started with the Raspberry Pi Model 3 so, so I'm just going to stick to that. Um, on the Raspberry Pi 
uh, uh, model three, um, I've actually on the on the GPIO pins, you can see that that is a motor driver or a motor board that that uh, I've, I've mounted on it. This actually ships with the Educate, the CamJam Educate. Um, the motor driver is actually connected to the motors that are fixed inside the box. The motors are in turn connected to the to the wheels that it drives. Um, there are two wheels on both sides and two motors and both motors are actually connected to this board over here that's connected on the GPIO pins. Uh, there is documentation available on how to get this done so you can just head out to the CamJam website to get uh, details on how to wire this up together. Um, I've also got uh, um, the, the, the camera module uh, connected to the Raspberry Pi, the, the white connector over here actually leads up to the camera uh, that's that's uh, mounted on the exterior of the of the chassis. Now, uh, the Raspberry Pi uh, camera module is, is a tiny one. It's, it's, it's just that size. I've actually mounted that on the zero view mount uh, that I got from the Pi Hut. Um, the zero view mount is, is really useful because it helps you uh, mount uh, the camera uh, onto um, a surface like the um, like this cardboard extension that I've used. Uh, the reason why I use that cardboard extension uh, is so that the camera is mounted at, at a reasonable height. Um, otherwise, um, the, the, the chassis of the robot would get in the way uh, when the, 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 the robot tries to take a picture. So that height actually helps and I just used a piece of cardboard to, to increase the height of the camera. Um, going back to the, uh, to the Raspberry Pi, um, I've also got, I've also got a, a um, I'm using a, uh, to power the Raspberry Pi, I'm using a USB OTG cable on the go cable. Um, notice that I've used uh, a cable that has the angular uh, kind of construct um, uh, on both sides, on both ends. Uh, this is extremely useful because you have a confined space uh, inside the um, inside the, the chassis and um, you don't want to have too much wire in there so it's a short cable and the angular actually helps so that it doesn't stick out uh, from the sides of the of the chassis um, how i'm going to power this raspberry pi uh, is by using a uh, a simple um, power bank uh, this is a power bank from nokia uh, I've, I've had this uh, laying around for for quite some time so i'm just going to use this uh, uh, it is reasonably lightweight um, and, and that is important because you want to keep the overall uh, weight, um, you, you want to reduce the overall weight of the, um, of, the, um, of, the, of the robot to a minimum because uh, these are driven by two motors and it can't take too much weight. So you need to be careful on the components that you select, uh, the speaker, the, the power supply so that it doesn't uh, take up too much, uh, too much weight. So um, I'm just going to use a, um, a power bank to uh, power the Raspberry Pi, uh, just plug it in there and the Raspberry Pi boots. Uh, basically, um, the other thing that's connected to the Raspberry Pi is actually a um, um, the ultrasound sensors in the front. Um, I've cut, I've poked two holes uh, on the chassis, on the box, basically, uh, the cardboard box, uh, so that the, uh, the, the ultrasound sa sensors can just stick out. But if I just take it out for a moment, just to show you how it's done, um, be careful here. Um, it, it's actually a, a, a board. Um, a, uh, the ultrasound sensor comes with the cam, cam, cam jam educate. Uh, it's mounted on this, or it's connected to the, connected to this uh, mini breadboard over here, uh, and that's actually connected to the uh, to the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi uh, via the the, uh, the motor board. Um, what's below here is actually a battery box. Now this battery box um, just contains normal double uh, A batteries, four of them. And this power supply is just used to power the motors. This is what drives the motors, and it's not it's not the uh, it's not the power bank that's going to drive the motors. Uh, it's actually the the, uh, the the battery box over here. The battery box does not power the uh, the Raspberry Pi um, because that's a different kind of voltage that you would need. Um, and in addition to that, uh, I told you that the, the, the robot can see and speak. So I've got the speaker. I'm using a Nokia speaker, which I had laying around as well. Uh, bright orange one for some reason. Um, and uh, the, uh, the speaker is just connected to the, to the audio interface on the Raspberry Pi uh, on the side. And, and that's it. Um, the, the other thing with the speaker is that you want to choose something that's really lightweight and, and, and fairly small. Uh, again, what weight is a consideration on the, uh, on, the on the robot. Uh, you don't want it to be too heavy because then it can't move. 
and uh, you just want to get something that's uh, lightweight and small and easily uh, something that you, something that you can easily mount uh, on top of the chassis. So let's put all this thing, all this back together, uh, so that um, we have a nice, neat, compact robot.